We are the keepers of the flame, the sacred order. Let the ceremony begin. And today, Faithful Acolytes, we take a look at this. And what this is from the mines at Torchbearer Sass Company, we have their all natural honey mustard. Bees love mustard too. I'm inclined to doubt that. And let's just shake it up a little bit here so we can get to that part. All right, so what we have in here is honey, apple cider vinegar, brown sugar, mustard powder, distilled white vinegar, canola oil, mustard seed, garlic, salt, and turmeric. So, there are no peppers in this. And when I got this, I, I didn't look that close. I figured Torchbearer is doing it. Probably going to have some heat to it. Nope, there's no heat at all to this. This, in fact, I mean, you can see it is exactly what it looks like, which is a honey mustard that leans really heavily on the side of a straight yellow mustard. And I thought about not actually doing this video because there is no heat to it. And then I thought, well, the name Torchbearer means a lot in this industry that a lot of us follow. I hate to say that I'm in, I'm really not in it. I'm just a, you know, just just a, another idiot with a blog and a YouTube channel. But Torchbearer means quite a bit to, you know, us that are fans of the industry and so on. So you can see there's little chunks of mustard seed in there. And it flows really nicely. It does have a really nice stickiness to it, as you saw when I poured it. But it flows easily enough that that is not a hindrance to it pouring out. You know, there's no, you can see there's no restrictor cap on this, but it, it does, it does flow pretty nicely and it sticks well. And, you know, as far as all that goes, I'm, I'm really, really pleased with this. So anyway, this is more of a nod to Torchbearer as a company than it is to the heat of this product. So just know that going in. And because I decided to do the summer of mustards, for 2021 during grilling season, I had it, I'm doing it. <laughs> We're just gonna kind of leave it there. But we'll, we'll see how this shakes out. I'm gonna look at the numbers over the winter and uh, maybe this is something we'll do every year. Maybe we'll do this next year too, I don't know yet. But, okay, anyway, I can smell this already. It smells really good. Let's just get to the getting. So this reminds me of the, the yellow monster I usually keep is either Plockman's or it's French's, one of those two. This really reminds me of if you had those mustards and you said there's just not, I like a little bit of tinge of sweetness to it. I like a little bit of honey to it. And that's really kind of where this falls. It, it does read very much as a yellow mustard. Certainly an element of sweetness to it, but um, kind of if you went yellow with some aspects of a stone ground and then you just said, okay, let's just throw a little sweetener in there. That's kind of what you have here. It's a really fascinating sauce, but because it doesn't really define itself with one cer certain flavor, flavor profile, I'll just say that, it, it's a little bit... It's confusing for me to know where to actually put this because you know if it's sweet on the sweet side honey honey mustard is definitely a fish Definitely a nice, you know grilled chicken kind of thing If it's more towards the yellow mustard Then you're looking a lot at things like you know burgers and stuff like that or hot dogs 
We have here a Nathan's Coney Island dog, pretzel dog. So, I don't know, these things are crazy expensive. I don't know why they're so much money, but they're, they're expensive. They're, they're buying a Frozen at the grocery stores. They're almost two bucks a throw because they come in a four pack. You know, it's pushing seven bucks. So, anyway, so there's the mustard. You can see a little pile of it right there. So, but back to what I was saying though, with the Dijons, you can do some different things with those as well. This one, I, I tried it in egg salad and I wasn't super happy with it. I would I would try it in potato salad if I was making any. And, and actually, I, I guess I haven't done that this year. So at some point I'll, I'll make a potato salad. Maybe that'll be in either the mustard video for August or September. Just kind of, we'll play that by year. But this one, it, it just, I, I just don't know where to put it. Because it, it sort of covers everything, but it also doesn't cover it in the way that the more straightforward mustards, I guess, I guess kind of do a little bit better, I think. But all right, so let's just, uh, let's just get to it here. They recalibrated these. These used to be a lot less doughy. These are really kind of doughy. And the other ones used to have, so they were darker. In fact, I think I might have done it in one of the other videos. They were darker and they had like little flecks of salt on them. These don't have anything. I'm wondering if the packaging got mixed up with like a bagel dog or something. Definitely, definitely, I mean you can see a light color here. These are not mustard dogs. Sorry. These are not pretzel dogs. They are mustard dogs now. But it's really weird kind of eating it this way that I'm getting a little bit more of the honey reading through now. It's still not a not a very sweet mustard though. It still reads very, very heavily as yellow mustard. It's good though. I over microwaved just a little bit. It's a really interesting approach to this. And I guess it's a nice change of pace if you said, you know. I love yellow mustard, but I really wish there was a little bit of sweet to it. <laughs> and there's a lot in here. Not like there's a small amount of mustard. This is taking a little bit to get through this much. I mean, everything else Torchberry does, it's pretty top quality. I don't have any complaints on that end. I just I'm just not sure where where I could you know where 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 it actually fits because you know and maybe it's just because I was exposed to the other ones but, but usually I don't mix mustards you know whatever I'm going with is a flavor that I want but this would work nice out of ham and cheese definitely I could I could see that so there's some good solid uses for it I'll definitely use it up but it's it's kind of a curiosity. I'm not trying grilling with it, I think, also. I never actually tried to grill with the mustard before, and I don't know how well that's going to work. <laughs> but we'll give that a shot, too, and kind of see where it plays out. But, yeah, I mean, that's really where it is. This is definitely, to me, where it says honey mustard, I think of, you know, like a, a dipping sauce, 
at a restaurant. Something like that. I think of a dipping sauce at a restaurant. And this is a pretty far cry from that kind of sweetness. It just it's just not there. Definitely reads more more the yellow. But again, that stone ground aspect in it too. I actually like that part. That part's pretty cool. So yeah, I mean we'll some we'll some fun with it. I think it's interesting that honey is the first ingredient and brown sugar is the third. And this still is not reading as super sweet, no matter how much I agitate it. Just I find that really, really kind of fascinating. So but uh, definitely so if you're a fan of mustards. This is this is definitely worth a go. Don't go into it though looking for heat also because there is none as in zero to be had here. So but there it is, the torchbearer honey mustard. Now go forth in peace to serve the flame.